Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 20th of J July 2020 and the time has just gone 11.40 British summer time. And it's been a fairly mixed start to the trading session today. Um, essentially the, the big in the story of the last few days is the European Union's 750 billion euro rescue fund. Uh, the original proposal was that 500 billion euros be doled out as grants and the remaining 250 billion euros will be issued as loans. Um, and essentially the, 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 those talks carried on over the weekend, they didn't reach an agreement, the, the, the progress is being made um, the, 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 and the talks are going to continue later on today. Um, essentially a number of countries, the Netherlands, Austria, Finland and Sweden dubbed the Frugal Four are essentially opposed to the idea of such a high percentage of the overall fund being issued as grants. They will prefer to see more money issued a higher percentage of loans. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, they're also will, uh, are not keen on the idea of, of funds being um, issued without any con conditions attached. Uh, over the weekend, uh, there was talk of very different condition, you know, conditions being attached whereby um, one government could effectively uh, question the, uh, the the deployment of funds to ensure that it's been spent on its appropriate issue. Um, also over the weekend, um, the kind of goalposts have changed uh, in terms of the monetary amount. Um, so it's understood that the likes of the likes of the Netherlands are still really keen for only 350 billion euros to be spent on grants. While, whereas France are, have kind of lowered their threshold to their, they still want grants to be at least 400 billion euros. So things are heading sort of in the right direction. They haven't gotten to an achievement yet, but because things have moved in the right direction, there's some level of optimism that some sort of deal will be struck. The European Union has, has a long history of a lot of kind of in-house haggling and in-house fighting, but in the end, uh, a deal is often struck. But because there's kind of a mixture of kind of optimism and also pessimism going around. A deal hasn't been achieved, that's bad. They're, they're, they're making progress, that's good. They probably they, they have a track record of making a deal at the end, that's also good. That's why we're kind of seeing the, the moves we are. So you know, earlier today we saw the, the, the DAX briefly trade above 13,000, uh, but, 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 but for the moment, you know, the, the FTSE is, uh, is, um, is in the red. We're also going to see in mixed markets, um, not so, nothing particularly special going on currently in Germany or in France. Um, that's kind of the major kind of story of the day. Uh, also keep an eye out for the health situation uh, in relation to Claxo, sorry, I apologize, uh, AstraZeneca, uh, and, and they're working in conjunction with the Uni University of Oxford. Uh, they're working on a potential vaccine. There has continued to be high hopes uh, around that. It's obviously, it's a very long process, uh, but uh, it was reported earlier on uh, that the Lancet Medical Journal uh, is due to report uh, trial results um, from that particular drug today. So that, that's going to be in focus. Um, to be honest, other than that, it's been a fairly quiet story, uh, quiet day, not much really going on in terms of economic indicators uh, or even on corporate stories. So for those of you who listen regularly to my weekly market updates, you know the structure. I'll talk about the week ahead, then I run through the popular indices, popular currency pairs and commodities. So let's take a look at the week ahead. Now the week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, go to insights under news analysis and that's where you'll find this. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have Canadian retail sales, Snap, the social media company, they have second quarter numbers out uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we'll also be focusing in on UK public sector net borrowing, public sector borrowing uh, tomorrow. That's obviously going to be in focus given how much money has been allocated towards the furloughs and the like. Excuse me. We have Q4 numbers out from Microsoft. Keep an eye out for the, uh, the figures uh, from the cloud division. That's been a big money spinner for Microsoft recently and that area as a whole um, is, is doing very well. Just look at Alphabet, Google's parent and Amazon. Uh, Twitter, the social media crowd, they have numbers, second quarter numbers coming out on Thursday. Unilever, Lever, um, they have uh, first half figures coming out on Thursday. Uh, and then also in relation to PMIs, we have the UK, France, Germany, PMI numbers coming out uh, on Friday. 
and we have first half numbers coming out from Centrica on Friday and finally we also well we also have UK retail sales on Friday and as we do with Vodafone Q1 numbers so what I'll take a quick what I'll do now is I'll run through a few of the popular indices starting off with it with the uh, the FTSE 100 so the wider trend of the last few months it's been a nice upward trend for the last few months it a three month high in June it's since then it's been sort of range bound it's still holding the kind of the wider upper trend of the last few months but notice how this zone here which is in around 3,000 sorry 3,000 it's in around 6,300 this area here continues to act as a kind of an area of resistance for the FTSE 100 but notice how we're nicely above this blue line here the 50 moving average while we hold above that metric it's likely that we're going to see the upper trend continue and if we do press on higher from here we could be looking at retesting the kind of 6300 area uh, and should we break beyond this area here the the late june high of uh 6342 if we go beyond that we could then be looking at targeting the high set in early june uh if we do move to the downside in around say six in in this zone here in around 6200 that's all to act as well north of it has acted fairly decently as support recently so that zone could um could act as support again and if you move below that keep an eye for this blue line here the 50 moving average now to be fair it acted nicely as support on a couple of occasions here and here it we saw that it consolidation in around it in, in around it in the past so that it's just because we've seen it act as as a we've seen consolidation in the area in the past and because we've also seen that support in the past it's a possibility that could area of the could be of importance should we drift lower from here but obviously there are no guarantees uh to be honest if, you know if you look at the trend for the last few months it's been an up, it's, it's an upward trend we really need to be breaking below the early july lows um in kind of just south of six thousand before we actually want to consider okay maybe the kind of wider trend of the last few months has come to an end I'll take a look at what's going on over in Germany. Like I said earlier on, very briefly a while ago, uh, the market hit, took out, hit its level last, uh, hit its highest level, it's hit a uh, trade above 13,000. Um, so, you know, that, that had took us back to levels last seen in February, I believe. It was February, so we're talking, you know, a multi month high was achieved. That'll give you an indication of how kind of strong the market is. So it's in a kind of wider upward trend. If we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at he heading towards 13,000. And if we go beyond 13,000, the next kind of level to keep an eye out for, well, to be honest, we'll be the kind of highs of late February in around kind of 13,440. Basically, the kind of the last week or so of February before sentiment really turns sour. But it is worth noting that the market's kind of been grinding higher the last few months, hasn't really kind of pushed on aggressively to the upside um so things are, are more bullish than bearish but there isn't a whole lot of bullish sentiment so even if you do drift a bit lower from here we could find support from this zone in around 12,500. and if you go below that support could come into play from this red line here the 50 moving average and that's in around 12,181. and even if you go below that support could could be found from this zone here down around 12,000. Taking a look at what's going on over in the US. Taking a look now at the Dow Jones and the likes. So last week we saw a, um, a multi-week high set in the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Dow Jones. Hit its highest level, um, yeah, in about a month or just, just over, uh, just under a month. Um, but we have been drifting ever so slightly lower. So it's still an upward trend. Notice how we're holding nicely above the 200 moving average, this red line here. While we continue to hold above that metric, it's likely that the kind of wider upward trend of the last few months is going to remain intact. So if we do press on higher from here and we look, and we look, look to take out the highs of, of last week, we can then be looking at targeting this zone here, the highs of early June in around um, 26, sorry, 20, 27,630, there thereabouts, that area there. Uh, even if you drift, drift below this red line here, the truly moving average, which comes into play at 26,250. We could find some support from this area here, 26,000 itself, you know, big psychological number. And even if you go below that, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, it acted nicely as support on a few occasions uh, in the last few months. In, uh, in mid-June, 
uh, in late June and also in uh, in mid to early to mid mid July. So, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be, be of importance in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees, and that comes into play at twenty six thousand six hundred and sixty two. Taking a look at what's going on with the S and P five hundred. So we can see here in the S&P 500, if you draw a trend line between the lows of late March and the lows of mid-June, you get this trend line along here. And even though it's, even though to be fair, the, the trend line, ha the market has been trading below, I still think it's interesting because the market seems to be kind of gravitating in around it. Um, we've obviously broken comfortably below it here. When the market tried to push higher again, it, it traded above it on a few occasions, but it couldn't quite get there. So it's, it's interesting that we're below the trend line, but at the same time, the market is still moving higher. And it's almost like even if you do move higher, this trend line could continue to act as a, as a barrier to further gains. Should we see the market press on higher here, we could be looking at, at, re, at right now taking out that trend line. And if we do take out that trend line, it's possible that old resistance could become new support. So. The wider trend is still to the upside. It just seems to me that the, pos that the positive trend is advancing at a slower rate. Um, so keep an eye on that. If you do if you look to drift a bit lower from here, because we're currently expecting the S&P 500 in the cash market to open at 3,215. If you drift lower from here, this area in a 3,200 itself could act as support. And if you drop below that, head back down towards the low scene in the kind of in the, for the first week or two of July, uh, north of 3,100, in around 3,115 or 120 there thereabouts. I take a look now. What's going on with the currency markets? Starting off with euro dollar. Zero dollar today hit its highest, hit another multi-month high. Uh, well, well, a, a fresh three-month high, fresh. Uh, four month high rather, highest level since early March. So it's in a nice solid upward trend, been pushing higher the last few days. Today it hit its light, highest level since early March, so it's a nice upward trend. If it continued to press on higher from here, we could be looking at testing the March highs in at one spot, 49.95. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting this area here and the highs, apologies. We could be looking at targeting this area here, the highs of January 2019, and that comes into play in at one spot, 1570. If you do like to drift a bit lower on Euro dollar, this area just north south of 114 in around in around um, one spot, 1370 there thereabouts could act as support. If you drift further lower from here, you know we'd really need to be taken out the kind of 112 area down to kind of one spot, 1168. So you know, we, we really need to be going below that metric uh, before we can actually get worried about, you know, the overall trend turning over on itself. Taking a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. To be honest, the pound dollar has been actually a bit kind of lackluster the last few sessions. It seems to me a bit indecisive. And you can see what I mean here. So it's kind of almost like caught between this kind of range between above the 50 moving average, this blue line here, but it hasn't really retested the 20 moving average, the red line. So it's been kind of range bound recently. Whereas, you know, we, we can see the last few sessions we've seen the lows have been higher. So the last few days we could, you know, in the near term, the, it seems to me the bias could be, could, could still remains to the upside. But if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the 20 moving average in at one spot, 26.98. And if you head beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here, the highs of, of mid-June or early June in a one spot, 28.31. Uh, a move to the downside could find support from the 50 moving average. Uh, and that comes into play in at, the 50 moving average is in at 124 spot 53. Uh, and if you head below that, we can be heading back down towards the kind of 124 area and a break below that could take us back down toward the uh, the low scene in late June. I take a look now at what's going on on the oil market, starting off with the um, Brent crude September contract. So we can see here that it's been a nice upward trend the last few months. In fact, only in the in the, in the last in the kind of back end of, of June, it hit a three-month high. Um, so 
it's in a solid upward trend, but notice how it hasn't really kind of pressed, progressed on. It's been, it's been trading in a small range. It hasn't really gotten up to towards 44 bucks a barrel, but then again, it hasn't really drifted that much lower. So the we've been trading in a small range recently, but the overall, the upper trend of the last few months is still intact. We're currently on Brent to September contract at $42.71. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the lows of, uh, of, of early March in at $46.33. If we do look to move lower from here, we could find support from the 40 bucks a barrel region, uh, big psychological number and all that. Uh, and then even if you go below that, excuse me, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play in at $39.82, that could potentially act as support to move to the downside. And lastly, I'll be taking a look at gold. So it was only last week uh, we saw gold hit its highest level uh, since September 2011. So we're talking like, you know, um, that was in at a, a price of around 1818, there thereabouts. We're currently at 1810, so we're not too far away from, you know, a multi-year high. Gold is in a, in a quite a strong position. Um, recently, there's been a quite a strong inverse relationship between the gold market and the US dollar market. That's often be, you know, be, been the case, but it's been particularly, uh, you know, that's particularly stood out recently. Uh, but that being said, the, um, the US dollar has often attracted um, safe haven funds recently. So keep, keep in mind what, what sentiment is actually doing uh, to, to kind of see, because that could impact what's going on in the gold market. Um, so the trend is clearly remains into the upside. If you press, if you hold, while we hold above 1800, it's likely that the kind of wider upward trend is going to continue. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 1828. If you have a decent move back below 1800, we could find support from the kind of mid July low in around 1790, and a move below that could take us back down towards 1770. Uh, thank you for listening. I appreciate the time. Stay safe. Have a good trading week and good luck.